Hi, my name is Ali Shersava, and in this introductory video, we're going to talk about the action of an inductor in a switch mode power supply. If you're new to power supply design and you're wondering why a diode seems to be forward biased whilst it looks like it shouldn't be, then in all likeness, that is because of the inductor, and this video is for you. So how does an inductor work in a switch mode power supply? Well, initially we study inductors at university. It was one of the first things that we do. And we study inductors in an AC circuit and we study, study, we, and we study them in a DC circuit. In an AC circuit, we give the inductor a sinusoid and we look at how the amplitude and phase changes. And in a DC analysis for, for the inductor, we give the inductor a unit step and then we look at how the current or voltage changes across or through the uh, the inductor the subject then is completely forgotten about for a couple of years until you come towards the end of your course and you start to study power electronics when it is taken for granted that you already know how an inductor works however the way an inductor behaves in a switch mode power supply is not really as clear-cut and as, as simple as a dc circuit or an ac circuit that you studied at university so let us see how things differ. Um, the thing to note before we start is that an inductor will always try to keep the value of the current whatever it was. An inductor opposes a change in the current. It does so by creating a back EMF across it so that the current doesn't change. So if there is a current of one amp flowing through an inductor and there needs to be a change, the inductor will create a back EMF that opposes this change from one amp. If there is zero amp flowing, it creates a back EMF with a magnitude and direction that opposes the change from zero amps. It's a little bit like trying to push a heavy car that doesn't start. Imagine at the beginning the car is at rest and you try to push the car. It's very heavy and it opposes you trying to move it. But then it slowly starts to move and as it picks up inertia and starts moving, then if you try to stop it, it will oppose you from trying to stop it. And this is how an inductor reacts to current. So let us have a look at the circuit, the one that we would have studied at university, but then we're going to relate it into what happens with a, uh, a power supply. So if I start with, let us say, a simple one volt DC battery. Let's say I have a switch here. Let's say I have a resistance of one ohms let's say this is only one volt and then let's say i have an inductor initially there is zero current going through the inductor now when i close the switch there is one volt that is impressed on here and the current will start to flow the inductor does not like the change of current from zero amps to whatever it is going to be. In our case, it's one ohms, one volt, so in total, eventually the current is going to be one amps. Therefore, a back EMF is formed across the two terminals of this inductor to oppose whatever is causing this change. In our case, we've got one volt, and therefore we've got a back EMF of one volt that will be generated here. Now, will it be this way, or will it be this way. Well, it's going to have to be this way because the current that is coming out of here, it's going to have to oppose this voltage. Okay, so the, the, the direction of it will be this way. What magnitude should it be in order to make sure there is no change? It has to be one volt. So as soon as you close this, a voltage of one volt initially appears across this in order to completely oppose this current. Uh, that, that you're trying to force through. Now, obviously, the inductor cannot hold onto this voltage forever. So after a while, the battery, which has got infinite energy in our case, if we assume that it is an ideal source, will try to push the current. And what happens is you'll get, this is textbook, what you study at university. You get a current that rises in the inductor in kind of a logarithmic manner. And um, I, won't, I won't go through the equation because it's unnecessarily will complicate stuff. Um, so this is your current, this is time, this is current through 
here through the inductor. Okay, now unfortunately in a power supply it doesn't quite work like that. To start with this resistance is almost near zero ohms so you do not see this shape of the curve that you're seeing. Actually, if you let it go, it will be a very straight line and eventually it will start to asymptote off, right? It's trying to approach the asymptote. You won't get that for two reasons, as I said. One, the resistance is near zero. Two, in a power supply, we never let this current try to approach this asymptote. We're switching things on and off. Now, if I reduce the amount of resistance, you won't see this curve, so it looks much more like a straight line. But for now, let us say that I have some resistance, so it will look like this. But because I don't let it reach this, approach this asymptote, I turn the switch off, the current goes down. Then I turn the switch back on, the current goes up. Then I turn the switch back off and the current goes down. Now that is if I have some resistance. If my resistance is near zero, this line flattens out, right? So you end up with a current that looks a straight line, does not approach the asymptote, and that is a classic shape of the triangular current that you see in inductor. And then we do lots of analysis whereby you say, well, this is a straight line, okay? And therefore, it's y is equal to mx plus c, equation for a straight line and things become very simple very very quickly and you can find the point in the middle by just subtracting that from that and then adding this extra ramp height that you have right and that is how the analysis in a switch mode power supply works now let us give you another example let us say That I have one volt there, I still have a switch, I have one ohms here, I have my inductor, let us say now I have another switch and I have two ohms here. Okay? Now, initially I close the switch, as we discussed the current will rise to around one amps, right? So the current at the end of the time, several time constants is around one amps because that's one volt and one ohms, and this is closed, right? Let us now assume that I open this switch at exactly the same time as I close that switch. So suddenly, I will have, I open this. If I don't close this switch, the back EMF will be so huge because one amp has to flow. Right, so this back EMF gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and there will be a spark on this switch. If you're using a MOSFET, it will blow up, and therefore, every time you open a switch and you interrupt the flow of the current, you're going to have to close another switch. So I open this, and at exactly the same time, I close that switch. So this bit goes out of the picture. Now, prior to me opening this and closing that, I had one amp flowing. The inductor wants an amp to continue to flow. But before it had one ohm was worth of resistance, but now it has got three ohms worth of resistance. So if you have got, the current has to flow, right? It's flowing this way, so it's gonna have to continue to flow. This is opened up, so this is actually out of the picture. The inductor wants one amp to flow here, okay? You have got three ohms. 2 ohms plus 1. So what would be the back EMF across this inductor in order to make sure 1 amp continues to flow? Well, it's 3 ohms, you need 1 amp. Ohm's law says you need 3 volts. But which way would be the direction of this? Would it have to be this way? Or would it have to be this way? Well, if it's that way, then the direction of the current will change. So it cannot be that way. Therefore, a voltage will appear across the inductor, whereby this end of it is positive, that end of it is negative. The back EMF will look like this. And if you were to replace this with a diode that looked like that, suddenly you'll find that this end is more positive 
than that end, therefore it conducts and it starts flowing. And that happens in power supplies all the time. So, so far we've talked about mechanical switches whereby we can open and close them instantaneously. Of course, in power supplies we are using semiconductor switches and, and it is not instantaneous, the opening and closing of the switch. If you have a mechanical switch and you open it in near zero time and you don't allow a different path for the current to flow, the back EMF of the inductor uh, will be so big that it will ionize the air, it'll be so huge that it will spark between the, the, the springs of the, of, the, of the mechanical switch. And by the way, that is why the uh, AC voltage rating of a uh, mechanical switch is so much higher than the DC voltage rating. Uh, because on a, if you have got an AC voltage, the, as the waveform sine wave goes through zero, then the uh, spark of the inductor will naturally extinguish. Whilst if you have got DC and you keep that DC, as long as there's energy in the stored inductor, that spark will continue to carry on. Uh, anyway, for a semiconductor switch, there's a finite amount of time that it takes for this switch to turn on and turn off. So uh, this leads us to the standard equation for the inductor, which is uh, E, the back EMF of the inductor, is equal to minus L di dt. Uh, and this is, of course, the famous uh, Faraday's and Lenz's law. Uh, e is the back EMF, L is the inductance that we have. Please don't be scared of this differential dr by dt because in vast majority of cases in power supply, we approximate that to straight lines and therefore it becomes a uh, delta i by delta t for a straight line. And if you've got a straight line, then if this is time, this is current, then y is equal to mx plus c, where y is the gradient y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So this will be y2, this will be x2, this will be y1, and this will be x1. This is one of the reasons why if we switch uh, MOSFETs extremely fast, we get big spikes. Because if you imagine that you have got some inductance, even if it's just track inductance, and you've got a MOSFET, for simplicity, let's say that this MOSFET is switching on in 10 nanoseconds, uh, or switching off in 10 nanoseconds, and let's say you're going from 10 amps to 0 amps, or vice versa, then this delta i delta by delta t or di dt will be absolutely huge because 10 amps divided by 10 nanoseconds, it's a very, very big number. You get a back EMF which manifests itself as noise and spikes all around the circuit. So um, in this video, we've discussed how an inductor works in a um, DC-DC switch mode power supply. We've talked about the triangular shape of the current, the back EMF, the direction of the back EMF, and why massive DIDT, when you turn things on and off, could cause huge voltage spikes in case of a mechanical switch A spark. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. There's a very nice presentation that you can download for free uh, from our website, and hope to see you in one of our workshops.